Okay, I'm going to do a uh, commentary on each of these uh, tutorials. Now, this is the first tutorial. I've, I've gone straight to slide 13, so I've skipped all the stuff about uh, atoms and uh, molecules and mixtures and uh, uh, compounds and whatnot. So they are important, but uh, get more to meet the stuff, the uh, carbon chemistry stuff. So this is the 30 tutorials, which is available on Blackboard. Uh, now I just tried to use this with uh, uh, Windows Explorer uh, running under Windows 7, and I couldn't get the damn thing to work. Um, so I've downloaded uh, Google Chrome, and it seems to work fine. And so if you have any trouble trouble getting it, just download Google Chrome, which is uh, free. Okay, so why is carbon special? Um, here's the first tutorial question. This is one of the ones where you type in an answer of questions. Uh, I'm going to do this on the screen, but I always think the best way for you to do this is to write them down. Uh, there's good evidence from cognitive psychology. Uh, getting a pen, a bit of paper, and writing stuff down is the best way to learn stuff. So the question here, how many bond does carbon form? So, leaving aside my bad grammar, I'll tell you it forms four bonds. And I get a tick, so that's right. Now, what is this characteristic called? Now, this is a, an important concept. It's, it, it's a key concept in our understanding. Of carbon chemistry and it's based on um, the atomic number and therefore the combine the valency or the combining power of carbon and you will get a periodic table in the exam but you should remember that carbon is element number six that is to say it has six uh, protons and in its uncharged form of six electrons as well but the protons are one that matters that's one that defines atomic number now two of those six uh, protons are in the inner or non-bonding shell or in, if, if you like the 1s orbital now, the other four are available for bonding. So it forms four bonds, and we call this characteristic tetravalency. Let me go to spell this right. And I have spelled it right. Okay, so we're now going to look at the simplest carbon compounds, the hydrocarbons. Those which contain only carbon and hydrogen. And I'm asking for the simplest class of these first. Uh, one which the carbon... Uh, carbon bonds, atoms rather, are bonded to each other by single bonds only. You should remember that is an alkane. Okay, I can't spell. Um, in this case, we're looking at ones where there's at least one carbon carbon double bond. Now, this is an alkene. Now, uh, you notice the first few letters are the same, it's just the A and the E that's different. Okay, so take that. Uh, which class of compounds contains carbon-carbon triple bonds? Now, these are the alkynes. Um, as we discussed, you don't see these very often in biological chemistry. Why? Oh, so not a plural. Beg your pardon. Okay. Uh, alkyne. Now, you don't see these very often in biological chemistry because they take quite a lot of energy to make. Um, I think we saw an example of something in some a carrot, falcarinol, one of the examples we looked at. Okay, so we've successfully negotiated the first page. Now I'm looking at the clock, it's about three minutes gone, so I'll probably have to do this in a number of sections due to uh, YouTube's 15 minute limit. Right, the next one we've got some examples of some chemical structures, two of which I've drawn out fully, and the other which I haven't. Now, to sort of understand what's happening in this one, you probably don't have to draw it out fully and see what's happening in this bond. Remember, each carbon forms four bonds. Um, so we'll just drop the, drag and drop the other one. So an alkane, that's one that doesn't have any double or triple bonds in it. It likes that one, and it gives a little note saying they contain any carbon, carbon, single bonds. The next one is an alkene, that's one that has one or more carbon, carbon, double bonds. Uh, so again, it's like that one. And the final one is this alkyne. Now as I say, you'll have to draw this out properly to see that between that carbon and that carbon, there's in fact a carbon, carbon, triple bond. Uh, right, now this is uh, one of the fundamental things about chemistry in particular, general and biological chemistry in particular. Uh, there's lots of complicated reactions you see in biochemistry textbooks, uh, but a lot of the molecules not doing much. It's only the part of the molecule that's called the functional group, of which there may be more than one that's actually doing the bits that react. Now here we've got a, a class of molecule called a carboxylic acid, which is a long carbon skeleton, which is this bit here. Now that's important. It'll help uh, determine how soluble a molecule is, what its melting point is, but it often isn't involved in the chemistry. It's normally the functional group. So if you drop there, uh, it comes with a little note and talking about what I've said basically there. So uh, in this case, 
if you had a longer one, you make a lot one that's a higher boiling one. So over here, by process of elimination, must be the functional group. Um, for some reason there, I'm talking about alcohols. This is a carboxylic acid. Uh, carboxylic acid group, as we discussed in a number of lectures, dissociates here, so you get a C double O minus group and a H plus going off on its own. Right, so we've got some functional groups here, and you will need to know uh, at least the basic ones here. Uh, so this is no H. Uh, remember, we've only drawn a little bit of the molecule there, just the functional group. The rest of the molecule is wandering off over here. I haven't bothered to draw it. So this is an um, alcohol. Uh, next one we've just seen on the previous page, uh, C double OH group. In this case, I haven't drawn it out fully, but it is as we discovered on the previous page. Uh, carboxylic acid. I must have spelled it correctly. Uh, this one's looking a bit fishy, and when fish go off, this is the sort of compound you can spell. You can smell amines. Um, also, compounds such as cadaverine. Uh, the pleasant spell of decomposing corpses are, are amines as well. So this is an amine. Um, again, not, 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 not the first three you see a lot of them in life. This one, not so much. Uh, nitro groups take a lot of energy to make, and you can make very energetic compounds such as trinitrotoluene with them, which will go bang. You press the wrong button, that in fact is a nitro group. Uh, SH groups, uh, a number of amino acids have SH groups, um, so they are quite important, quite polar groups, so this is, uh, to give it its proper name, it is a thiol group, uh, quite similar to alcohols, uh, in, in this case in this case, the alcohol we've got an o, o before the H, in this case we've got an S before the H. Uh, in terms of the, uh, sort of the tertiary structure of proteins, how, how they bind together in big structures, uh, these disulfide bonds are often important. Uh, we discuss thiol groups and disulfide bonds in the context of home perms, or perms in the shops. Uh, we'll notice how spelled out with a PH. You see, an American textbook will often be spelled with an F. Right, so, okay, so this is uh, how we represent three-dimensional objects or three-dimensional molecules in a two-dimensional format. Uh, this is the simplest of hydrocarbons, I'm sure you recognise, methane. Uh, central carbon atom with three hydrogen atoms tetrahedrally arranged around it uh, with a bond angle of 109 degrees and 28 minutes. Uh, some of these bonds are going into the plane of the board, some are coming out and some of them are in the plane of the board. So we'll, we'll click on the ones that are in the plane of the board first, that's that one, which we represent as a straight line. Uh, ones that are disappearing into the board would be an example there. Uh, so we use a dotted line for them. And finally, for the ones that are coming towards us, uh, we use a sort of wedge or a chevron. And you will often see this uh, quite complicated molecules. There'll be a little bit of it where people have picked out a particular aspect of stereochemistry, often as simple as whether hydrogen is going into the board as you look at it, so the papers you look at it are coming out. Uh, right, this is something you're going to have to uh, do yourselves and uh, sketch the full structures of these molecules. Uh, we're of course in chem chemical lazy here mode, chemists aren't lazy, but they don't tend to draw in stuff they don't need to draw. In this case, this is a simple hydrocarbon, it doesn't have any functional groups. It is a long carbon chain, so you're going to have to uh, think about uh, how many car each of these points of course is a carbon, so how many hydrogens are attached, and what's happening up here. Uh, so have a little think, pause the video if you want to, uh, write down your answer, and then move on, which I'm going to do now. Okay, right, now remember, when you've got a, a chain of carbon atoms, the terminal ones are always methyl groups, so there's always a CH3 and a CH3 here. The ones that are in the chain are always going to be CH2 groups. Now the one that's sticking up, uh, we'll go back and have a look at that again, that one there. Uh, it's not a hydrogen, it is in fact a methyl group. If it was a hydrogen, we wouldn't have drawn it in. So it is again a methyl group. Okay, as molecule number two, well, we go in the opposite direction. Uh, we're going from the full structure to uh, chemical lazy mode. Uh, so again, we think about what we need to include. In this case, of course, we need to include the carbon skeleton and any functional groups. Uh, so pause if you need to. And I'm going to move on now. Uh, okay, I've drawn that actually upside down to indicate there's actually no difference between the amine group in that position 
than the individual bird. It just happened to have drawn the way I drew it. Uh, they are in fact, in effect, identical. Uh, right, here's molecule number three, which if you look has a number of functional groups in it. Um, so again, we're going from the full structure uh, to the uh, chemical lazy structure, which will just be the uh, carbon chain plus the functional groups, which I'm going to move on to now. Okay, so we've got three OH groups in this one. So a little bit more complicated, uh, but perfectly uh, definable. And I think you can also see that's quite complicated. Whereas that's quite a nice, straightforward way to draw the thing. Okay, here's a molecule which is pretty unlikely to see in biology. You don't see many uh, uh, ring. Any, it's called a ring, even though it's great. It's actually a ring of carbon atoms arranged like that. And it takes a lot of energy to make them again. Um, so, again, have a think. Uh, we've got a functional group there, which I've put in by its normal designation. I've put a functional group here which I've just sort of named. Uh, there isn't an element called ET, uh, obviously. So this is a little bit more complicated. So have a think about this. Uh, the ET group is in fact an ethyl group. Uh, again, you will see these in groups. You'll see ET for ethyl or PR for propyl, for example. Uh, there's no H group down here, which we would already spotted. Um, now, this is a chain of carbon atoms in a ring, if you will. So it doesn't have any terminal ones, so there's no methyl groups here. All of these are CH2 groups. CH2 group there, CH2 group. Uh, one of the hydrogens there has been substituted with OH, and then one of the hydrogens here has been substituted with the ethyl group. Okay, um, this sort of uh, five carbon ring you'll often see in biology. Uh, it's got double bond in it. Uh, as we saw from the previous slide, it's a ring, so there's not going to be terminal methyl groups. Um, so, but the double bond does complicate matters a little bit. So have a think about what you're going to do. And I'm going to move on now. Uh, there. So we notice again CH2, CH2, CH2. Uh, because of the double bond here, these, this carbon and that carbon uh, can only have one hydrogen attached to them. Okay, so that was the last one, so moving on. Uh, right, we'll do this one fairly quickly. This, uh, because the time, the time is getting on quite a bit, uh, and I'm running out of time. In fact, I'm going to pause here, and I'll come back to this one in part two of this video series. So I'm just going to stop there.